So you've probably ended up on this video because you've arrived at part four of the Unit 7 worksheet, where we're finally dealing with the actual topic of spectroscopic parallax. So in this situation, in this assignment specifically, you are given a list of seven stars on page seven. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on those seven stars specifically. As you can see, again, on the left side of my screen, I have page seven itself. We'll see that in full view here on the left. And on the right side of my screen, I have a blank HR diagram once again. So the reason this is blank is because I have been working on the solution manual, of course, and I have the actual um, placement of each of the stars from your list of bright stars and your list of nearby stars on the HR diagram, but on a different page, because I'd like for you to do the work yourself as well. And once the solutions are available, you can go ahead and take a look at it yourself. But assuming at this point, if you've arrived at part four of the worksheet, your HR diagram should be completed for the most part. So it should look something kind of like that, not including the rainbow colorful background instead. It will have a lot of the stars placed on the HR diagram looking something like what we're looking at here. So to make our work a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove the colors so we're not really focusing so much on the colors of the background and just kind of clear out the shadow effect of the image as well. So all we're really looking at now are the general placements of the dots that represent the stars from your list of bright stars and your list of nearby stars. So your HR diagram should look something like this at this point once you've arrived at part four. So let's go ahead and jump right into it now that we've already spent two minutes talking about this particular part of the project. So now you have a list of seven stars given here named after some of the various Star Wars characters. And the first set of directions tells you that in order for you to actually use these stars to determine their distances via spectroscopic parallax, you need to determine where they go on the HR diagram. But all you're given is the spectral type and not really much more than that, except for the fact that in the preceding paragraph, it says that each star in that table is a main sequence star. So knowing that each of these stars listed here, so Vader, Leia, Yoda, Kenobi, Rey, Luke, and Tico, every single one of these stars is a main sequence star. So when you go to your HR diagram to figure out where exactly you're supposed to place these stars, all you'll really need to know is the spectral type, and the fact that it should sit somewhere on the main sequence itself that you've actually created on your own HR diagram. So starting with the star Vader, which is given as a spectral type A4 star, we can go ahead and place a quick dot, which I believe is on the previous page. So I will bring this guy down to this page and now I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the A column right here. And this little dot that I had over here, this green dot, is what I'll use to place Vader on my HR diagram. So Vader is an A4 type of a star, so it's going to be on this line right here. But not down here on the HR diagram because it is a main sequence star. So I'm going to go up to the main sequence somewhere and place it maybe in the middle, maybe towards the bottom, you know, section of the HR diagram's main sequence, or, you know, somewhere in the middle of it at the top, whatever. But it's up to you where exactly you want to place the stars themselves, because we can't really be sure how thick or how thin or how wide the main sequence actually is. We have a very limited amount of stars in our samples, even though we were dealing with somewhere in the 40s, in your list of nearby stars and in your list of bright stars. But regardless, we don't have a lot of samples that we've placed on the HR diagram ourselves. So placing our star here for Vader is a good starting point. And we can go ahead and label it like this. And I'll just place that in bold, make it green so it can pop. And now we know that this star right here is Vader. So we actually have a name for it. We have labeled it and it's located on the HR diagram somewhere in the main sequence. Now that we've placed it on the main sequence, the next thing we need to do is determine its absolute magnitude now based on where we have placed it. So Vader is placed right there. We're dealing with Vader just now and we know exactly where it's placed. 
So in order for us to figure out what absolute magnitude that star might have, and we're going to just go ahead and estimate this, we will take a quick look and I will insert a line to help us kind of follow the lines here to figure out exactly what the absolute magnitude of this star is going to be. So starting here at the star itself, I'll draw a line and make it go all the way past the absolute magnitude axis. And I'll make this line green as well and a little bit thicker so it's easier to actually spot it. So now we know that this line, it represents the actual absolute magnitude of the star Vader. But where exactly does it fall on this scale? So the interesting thing about how the scale works is that this line right here is the zero marker for absolute magnitude. This line right here is the plus 5. This line in the middle is positive 2.5. So I'll just place a positive 2.5 marker in here in the middle and determine where the number is going to be and give ourselves an estimate of what we would kind of expect the absolute magnitude of these stars to be based on their placement on the HR diagram. So in the case of Vader, we can see that this line crosses somewhere between 0 and positive 2.5 closer to the positive 2.5, maybe at a value of, let's say, positive 2. And, you know, the exactness isn't necessarily important right now. We'll just go ahead and assume that the absolute magnitude of Vader is positive 2 in this case. Now, having a value for the absolute magnitude and a value for the apparent magnitude allows us to use the distance modulus equation, which you can see on the left side of the screen right here, where we're given d, which is the distance in parsecs, is equal to 10 to the power of the apparent magnitude minus the absolute magnitude plus 5, all over 5. If you need to know the details of how to use this distance modulus equation, I do have another video posted that goes through the entire explanation in more detail. So. If you need help with that, go ahead and jump to that video, which I will post the link to in the description to this one as well. So you can have somewhere to jump to if you need it. But now if we move on to the next star, let's say we're looking at the star Leia. Now in order for us to plot Leia on the HR diagram, let me move the label of Vader so it's a little easier to grab the dot itself. So I'm going to copy paste that little dot that I was using. And now I will move this dot onto a lower, uh, lower section of the HR diagram's main sequence where I can finally plot the star Leia as a K6 type star. So let's go ahead and take this dot, if I can grab it. Let me zoom in and make it a little easier to do. Okay, grabbed it, moving all the way down to the K6 side. So here's the thing. Now I'm on K2. I need K6. K6 is right here. Since if we look down at the K column, this is K0, this is K2, this is K4, this is K6. But I need K6 on the main sequence. So maybe, maybe here. Why not? If we place it right there on the main line itself, it makes it a little easier for us to determine what the absolute magnitude of this star is going to be. So if I take that line and copy paste it so I can follow the line a little easier to read my absolute magnitude value, it jumps right between 5 and 10, which means that the absolute magnitude of Leia is 7.5 based on my graph here. And I'll go ahead and add a label for Leia as well because that's part of the directions and I need to make sure that I'm labeling the stars, at least the stars in the Star Wars category for this assignment on my worksheet as well. So now that I've zoomed out a little bit, we can see the full HR diagram or, or at least the part of it that we really need. And based on the location of Leia, we can say that the absolute magnitude of that star is about 7.5. And then continuing on with Yoda, Kenobi, Rey, Luke, and Tico, you can place those stars in their respective locations on, their, on the HR diagram that you have and from the HR diagram, go ahead and estimate each star's absolute magnitude so that you can eventually go forward and find the actual distances to these stars. Of course, these are hypothetical stars, so there is no solution that you could look up online because a lot of what we're doing here in this part of the assignment is just dealing with a whole bunch of stars that don't necessarily exist. But 
it makes for a fun activity, hopefully. And if you have any questions about it at this point, I'm done with the kind of tutorial for this portion of the assignment. But again, if you ever have any questions, I'm only a quick message, email, office hours away, and I will be happy to help you through the problems if you have any along the way.